it's really unfair to compare Tokyo or Japan to Korea. A bunch of my friends in San Diego, a lot of people who, Korean people who come to San Diego, they come there to learn English and they go to an ohaktang. Uh, and they have a pretty easy life and they have a fun life. And because they're in America, they should, it's their opportunity. So they often travel around to other cities in America. So I have a lot of friends who first, their first experience with America is San Diego. And what you have to understand about the West Coast and San Diego is that San Diego is a very new city. There is nothing older than 100 years old. If you found something in San Diego that's 100 years old, that's quite rare and quite old. Most things are newer than 50 years old. A lot of things are less than 10 or 20 years old. We've got a lot of land, so there's a lot of new stuff. And because of that, a lot of stuff looks like new and clean. And because we, um, because we drive everywhere, we don't walk in the streets, so often the streets look kind of clean and kind of nice. There are certain areas that are not so clean. There are certain areas that are not so nice, but I mean, it's, in general, it's pretty clean. So Korean people come to San Diego and they think, wow, San Diego is a really clean, nice place. And they think, wow, America is a really clean, nice place. And then I think a lot of Korean people have this dream of going to New York because they see New York in television and in movies and they think, wow, New York's this awesome, great city. I'm going to go there. And my friends will go visit New York and then they'll come back to San Diego and I say, hey, how was New York? And, you know, Korean people want to be very careful with their words. They don't want to be negative and terrible. They want to you know, say like, oh, it's so nice. And they said, they go, yeah, it was, it was nice. And I go like, yeah, well, what was good about it? Oh, I went to a play or a musical and I went to a, a museum and I saw some things. And then I say like, so how was it really? And I keep probing, probing, they go, it's, uh, it's kind of dirty and there's a lot of homeless people and it's uh, a little weird and scary. Not, I don't want to say scary, but anyway, but I want to focus on the fact that New York is not that clean. And I think most major cities in the world, like really big cities, we're talking about New York, Chicago, London, Paris, Rome for sure. These cities are not that clean when you compare them to a city like Seoul. So my Korean friends, they're coming from Seoul or Busan and those cities compared to other gigantic cities in the world are super clean. But there's one big problem. People don't compare Seoul to New York very often. People usually compare Seoul to Tokyo or Seoul to Osaka. And the thing is, <laughs> Osaka and Tokyo are crazy clean, crazy clean. And what makes me crazy about this is that even though as far, if you like made a, um, a map, if you made a line of like all the gigantic cities in the world, I'm not talking about, like, San Diego is also clean, but it's because it's kind of a smaller city and it's, we drive everywhere and there's some re weird reasons. I'm talking about like big cities where there's a lot of foot traffic and there's uh, yeah, a lot of foot traffic basically. And there's a lot of people living in a small area. Those cities, Seoul, among those cities, Seoul is extremely clean. The problem is a lot of people who visit Seoul have already been to Tokyo and we're comparing it to, I think in a lot of ways, it's very important to compare Korean culture with Japanese culture. And um, I'm probably gonna make another video specifically about that, but it is important. But sometimes it's just unfair because Japan is a crazy outlier, right? Like there's, you know, if you had this whole group of cities, like there'd be a big block of them that are about, you know, this clean, this clean. And then all of a sudden you'd have like Seoul and then very close, but even more clean would be like Tokyo, right? And that's because Japan is a crazy outlier. And I think it's really unfair because Korea gets compared to Japan so much, even though Japan is just like not even in the pack. I always think about it this way. It's like, imagine you were in a, a class, like a university class, and you got a 95% or a 90%, 95% on a test. And, and this is a class of 200 people, 300 people, and everyone else, the next highest score was 35%. And everyone was basically around 35%. But there was one dude who got 100%. 
And then your professor came up to you and go, man, you're a fucking loser. Compared to that dude, he got 100%. You got 5% off? What's wrong with you? I think that happens with a lot of stuff with Korea because so many Hanguk otaku, like those of us who like Korean culture, so many of us used to like Japanese culture before and, and, and found out about like Japanese animation and blah, and that was their entrance into Korean culture. So they do a lot of comparing with Japan. So they come to Seoul and they think, oh, this place is this place isn't very clean. I mean, when I was in Tokyo last week, it was so sparkling perfect, and now here is, is gross. And when you think about it, I, I also like to think, you know, if I went to New York, or London, or Paris, or Rome, and I went there, I said, man, this place is so, like, dirty. And a friend from that city were with me, and he says, no, 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 why? Why is it dirty? I said, well, I was in Tokyo last week, and it was super clean, so this is really dirty. He would say, are you fucking crazy? How could you compare those guys to us and that's fair because it's they're completely different cultures and i guess it's better to make comparison between korea and japan because it's much closer and much more similar but it's still unfair i think the lens that everyone sees uh korea through because of its comparison to japan um that's it for this video if you like the video give it a thumbs up if you hate the video give it a thumbs down uh if you hate me if you love me if you hate my opinions if you love my opinions please subscribe um, I guess, you know, add me on Facebook, or don't add me on it. like my Facebook page and let's try to make some conversations go on there. I guess follow me on Instagram because if you're an internet person, you're supposed to follow people on Instagram. You're supposed to have an Instagram do stuff. I don't know. Comments. Oh my God. Everything I say is an opinion. Okay. Everything I say is not a fact. So there's a lot of room for adjustment. I want to hear from you and know what you guys think. Um... So I, I'm seeing all these comments on my videos. It makes me so proud and so happy that people are watching my videos, thinking about them, agreeing with them, and s agreeing with me so harshly that so much that they want to say, "Hey, I agree," or disagreeing so much that they're saying, "Hey, I don't agree. You're an idiot." That's just the best feeling in the world. Um, and lastly, if you, what could really help me is if you find one of my videos that you really like, please share it in all of your cacao group chats and tell all your friends hey i found this this weird way can on youtube his name's pake day he's a weird dude and he's got some cool opinions or some terrible opinions and i think you guys all got to see this and then maybe you guys can talk about the video and share your opinions and stuff in your group chat and that is a good way for me to spread my word so that's it um have a great day